Hi guys, it's Lily and the Postmodern Mom. Today is a makeup monologue talking about Disney princesses. Alright, so there was a day when Disney was doing the right thing in terms of portraying good and evil and um, so my family, our family, the postmodern family, we're not 100% against Disney princesses, all of Disney princesses, but we are definitely very cautious about which ones we show from the modern age. So, um, for example, the Mulan Disney princess is now the live action film is now available to purchase for like exorbitant amounts of money on um, Disney Plus, I think. And let me just tell you, my parents thought, my parents really liked, I think, the Disney Mulan, the animated version. And um, and I enjoyed it growing up. I like that. I watched it and I like the music. Who is that girl I see? Standing there, staring straight back at me. Why does my reflection, someone I don't know, I remember the words. So, I really, um, I'm gonna put this on today. I'm just feeling a bit fancier than normal. This is my Estee Lauder Double Wear 2N1. And, but what I found really ironic with this song and how my parents thought it was nice but um, and I thought it was nice but I think I liked it for different reasons especially that song that song in the series about her looking at herself and thinking everyone else thinks I'm this like a princess like girly girl a feminine girl but she's saying but really I want to be this I want to be a fighter I want to go into the army etc and be a soldier and she has to hide that right and I remember thinking the same thing about myself in the sense that oh I think you know my dad wants me to be this filial piety uh, very loyal faithful little daughter and never like boys and and yet in, I, inside I was like really interested in dating and all that silly stuff that isn't really something that you should be encouraging so anyway because because of that song and the movie I was like I I really enjoyed it I liked it but then I also knew growing up not to be like totally enamored by Mulan because she passed for a guy for over 10 years in the army I mean she must have been quite unattractive more masculine in her features to not be outed that long so anyway I just I, I always think practically about these things and just I want to be really logical and I think that was one of the things that I was like that's a bit weird um, so anyway we're not even sure if she was a real person it's because um, the story about Mulan that's written in history is not a history book it is a ballad or like a poem and um, so it could just be someone just made up this story and this lady named Hua Mulan. But anyway, um, enough about Mulan. There are some Disney princesses that we love and we uh, let our children watch, which is Sleeping Beauty, um, uh, Cinderella, and um, Snow, White. Snow White. Yeah, those are the three, basically the original classics. Once you get beyond that, like Little Mermaid and Jasmine, um, they become more and more feminist in ideology and they basically are just trying to be rebels. Like I feel like that's their whole shtick is they want to be a rebel. And so Little Mermaid wants to rebel against her um, mermaid features. She wants to be human, right? And for what? Because of love. It's always because of love. And then Jasmine doesn't want to be like part of the royal family and her royal status um, because of love again. She, and she wants to find true love. She doesn't want to be married off because of her stature, which is understandable. 
but um, but she rebels against that. She doesn't want to be seen as respectable. I don't know. And then um, who is the other one? What did I say? Little Mermaid. I did that. Little Mermaid, Jasmine. Uh, there's so many more, so many more, especially when we get into the even more modern day ones, like the Mulan one, which is then all about her wanting to fulfill her own destiny, Sh you know, basically trying to shake off the shackles of femininity, and I think that that's just not nice, and it really devalues the role of motherhood, it devalues how sacred and necessary and beautiful and honoring our role is as women to be mothers and to care for children. Um, and yeah, the more we elevate this idea that, oh, a woman's only going to get respect and honor if she behaves and acts like a man or if she rebels against the feminine identity of women, then you're going to get young girls who don't want to embrace femininity and motherhood and look down upon women who choose that kind of lifestyle like the trad wives. And I mean, you guys may not realize, but most of my videos are a defense of the trad wife. Not like, I'm not trying to tear down career women or women who must work. I want to defend my position because so many people think it's okay to look down upon the role of motherhood, the calling, the holy calling of motherhood. So, oh, let me get off my soapbox there. So, what are some problems with the Disney princesses? I mean, there are so many things that people talk about that I honestly haven't done much research on. A lot of people are saying that, like, you know, the whole pedophile ring, um, wine scene and all that, that they're somehow all related. Um, and they've been trying to groom children since I don't remember when and um, and like you know how there's some hidden messages in Lion King um, and certain other ones where you just have like the sign the hand sign of the Masons or something I don't know there's some conspiracy theorists out there who think that that Disney is like trying to infiltrate children in and encourage things like pedophilia and stuff, which is just gross. Um, I'm not like one of those hardcore ones who think that necessarily that's happening. I'm not gonna totally discount it, but I think one thing that they are doing that is quite obvious is pushing the feminist agenda. I think that they really think that girls are better off acting like boys, and they're also trying to blur the lines between boys and girls, which doesn't make any sense why they would want to do that, but I do feel like that's happening. Um, so yeah, I think in terms of Disney and Disney princesses, you just have to be really careful about what you let your children watch. You can't just assume because it's a program for children, labeled it for children, that it's going to be good for them. I blush, a little blush on really hard to tell because it's kind of like really bright right now. Hard to tell that I'm wearing what I'm wearing. Oh. Yeah, this is like a bright place. Mm -hmm. My room. Yeah. Is your room bright too? No, my room's kind of dark. Why? I don't know. Well, maybe because uh, there's decoration in the bathroom of light. Maybe. All right, I think I'm gonna go a little bit more glam than usual. I didn't put any concealer on. What's wrong with me? I'll put some concealer on. I've been using this Laura Geller one that I found. That I really enjoy. It's like the right. It's the right shade for me, I think. Compared to the other one that I bought, the Revolution one. I just um. I guess I forgot that I had a concealer. <laughs> Just shows you how old it is probably, hiding it. And they say you're not supposed to put concealer under your eyes, but I don't have any under eye concealer that's like super moist. I probably should get some. And a little bit of this goes a really long way, so I'm just trying to use a very little bit, touch, just touches of it. 
still have this blemish on my forehead. I don't know if it's going to go away. So, Doris has really been enjoying her new bed. And I love, bed. and I love climbing the ladder. Yeah, you love climbing up and down. But daddy's, but my daddy said that. Humphrey's not allowed? Yeah, because, because the steps are too wide. Yeah, so it's just for you. How lucky. You love it. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of eyeshadow on today. Um, I'm going to use this to carve out my nose a little bit. Just for the fun of it. I've been watching too many of those makeup videos, I think. Like, like Miss Darcy. She's so funny. Why is she funny? Mm -hmm. She says and does funny things. Alright, so. But that's okay. Bye bye. I have a bit of a dark, bye! A bit of a dark nose bridge right here. That would be good to highlight instead of make dark. Anyway, um, so yeah, the Mulan fiasco, I, so it turns out, the other thing that I really loved about the animated version of Mulan was it had this really handsome, muscular, masculine man, um, the general who's, who trained Mulan and, and I guess eventually fell in love with her and according to the Disney story, um, that was... I mean, I really liked him. <laughs> if he was in real life, I'd be like all over that. Um, so I remember like having a crush on a cartoon character. <laughs> it was Lee Shang. Um, Shang Li, is that his? I don't know. Is it Lee Shang or Shang Li? Anyway, I'd have to look it up. I don't even know the Chinese character for his name. But, um, but yeah, his song. Was, Let's get down to business. That this is so fun. It's a good one. And um, anyway, when I found out that the remake, the live action remake of Mulan didn't have any music to it, I was like, what are you guys doing? There's no music and there's no Lee Shang. And you're just like, uh, who's gonna watch this movie? <laughs> so that was a bit shocking to me that they didn't have his character in it. That's what I've heard. I've not even watched it, so who knows? Maybe he is in it, but um, I definitely think more people would be interested in watching it if there was like the super muscular, handsome Chinese man who knows how to fight. That's what should, they should do, I think. There are already some really famous Chinese actors who do a great job with a lot of these action films, Chinese action films. Donnie Yen is really good, but he's older and he's not as like built muscularly, physically, like just the look of him isn't that amazing, but he's an amazing fighter. And I absolutely love the Ip Man series. Okay, anyway, what else is wrong with Disney princesses? Um, there's definitely a blurring between good and evil in the newer films. In the older, original ones, it's very clear that there's good and evil and what side they're on. So, for example, in uh, Sleeping Beauty, Maleficent even says um, something about like, Oh, and I love the forces of evil. Like, she's like all about being evil and she even says she loves evil. And, um, and so it's very obvious and very clear that there's this idea of good versus evil. But in modern films, that line is blurred, especially the film about Maleficent, titled Maleficent, played by Angelina Jolie. It's trying to say like, oh, there's goodness behind every sort of evil and trying to paint her as she's only like this because she was hurt. And um, yeah, of course there's a backstory to how people become evil, but don't blur the lines between what is actually evil and what is good because you it doesn't excuse your evil behavior if you have a, a, a sad story 
you know, you're still responsible for your actions and you can't just, you know, say, oh, well, that's okay for you to kill people because you yourself um, were, you're, you know, the Maleficent story, she's basically a, um, what is it called, a scorned woman. She's a scorned woman and that's why she's upset and that's why she's, she turns evil. This is also true of the Wicked, the musical, um, trying to make the Wicked Witch of the East, or the West, I forget which one, you know, sh her backstory is that she was, you know, bullied for her green skin, and that's why she became evil, and she, there was an opportunity there for her to be good, but she chose evil, and they're trying to make you feel sympathetic towards this evil character, but in the original Wizard of Oz, she's just plain evil. Like, she's just an evil, wicked witch who wants to rule and wants to hurt people to get her way um, for more power or whatever. And I think that just is much simpler in understanding, at least for children, to learn to hate what is evil and love what is good. Okay, doing my eyebrows. So, I will put on a little bit of this Cleo eyeliner. I want to put on a little bit, but then I end up putting on a lot because I can't draw a straight line. Is that even? It looks like I've um, smudged it a bit. Okay, let me hide that a little bit with some eyeshadow. I'm gonna use a soft blend blender brush with this eyeshadow. Put on a touch. What do you think, Doris? Mm -hmm. Does it look okay? Yeah. It's not straight line, it's just like this. And then put on a little bit of this lid smoothie yeah. by, um, is it, I think, Clinique. Had it for ages. It's number one bit of honey. I'm sure they don't sell it anymore. It's seriously been a long time since I've had this. Put it on to highlight my brow as well. There. Very nice. Matte foundation on. Did you find it? And then I'm just going to put a little bit of Mineral Veil on top. This Mineral Veil powder. Yeah, thank you. That's the one I want. Okay. Mineral Veil. How can, how can you even reach down there? Reach where? Down there. Into the cup. With a brush. I don't know. A little bit comes out, so I can use just a little bit. Okay, here we go.
So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below and let me know other topics you'd like to hear me talk about. And as always, have a really blessed day. Have a great week. Bye. I think there's such a joy in keeping a good home and watching your children grow up and cooking and cleaning and supporting your husband.